Hi, I'm Keely from Sew With The Kiss, and today we're going to take a look at sock needles. Um, forever, people have been knitting socks on double point needles. It used to be this was pretty much the only way you would make a sock. And your sock would be laid out with your stitches divided onto three double points, and then you'd use an empty needle. And you would work all these stitches from the first needle off onto the empty needle and you just keep going around. Um, I'm not going to get into the exact detail on how these work. There's a gazillion videos out there on how to do it, but this is just your basic way of making a sock and there's absolutely nothing wrong with us, well, wrong with this at all. Many of us still knit socks this way. Um, double points are great to me. Uh, they're a very logic way to knit socks. Uh, your needles serve as your dividing points. Uh, in thirds for when you do your gusset. Um, you can have it all divided half and then the other parts on half and it just works out great. It's just logical. You don't really need stitch markers and um, double points are pretty cool. We discovered though that not everybody likes double points and that's okay. Uh, just like with everything else knitting, it doesn't really matter how you go about it as long as you get the same results. And in um, 2001, the late, the great Cat Forty came out with a revolutionary book called Sock Soar on Two Circular Needles. And that was the thing for many, many people and still are who did not enjoy double point needles. Uh, for that, you would use two, usually 24 inch circulars, and half the stitches are on one circular and half are on the other. And all you do is pull this tip for the matching needle up and around and then you work onto that and then when you get to the end of the other one you do the same thing. The main trick is to make sure you you're using the tip with the corresponding needle or you'll wind up with all the stitches onto one needle and you'll have to move them around. It'll slow you down. So that's another way to do socks on the two circulars. About a year after Kat Bordy's revolutionary two circ method became the thing, um, another publication came out. It was published by Bev Galaskis of Fiber Trends. It was called Sarah Hoshka's Magical Invention of Magic Loop. And it was another way of doing it. It also uses a circular, but instead of two 24 inch circulars, it uses one long, usually a 40 inch circular. And you have a long cable here, and then you bring your tip up to knit, and you leave the rest of the long cable here. So you have the cable sticking out each end, and you work on the circular with just the one long needle. And that's another way to do it. Some people love magic loop, some people love two circulars, and some of us still like our double points. Um, and that's been the way of working socks for many, many years. Up until just a few years ago, when Audi needles came out with some new needles called Flexi Flips. I love these. I think they're great. I, it's probably the newest, coolest thing in socks since the two circs and the Magic Loop came out, you know, way back in the early part of the millennia. And as you can see, it's similar to double points, except the stitches are divided with half on one and half on other. These are little bitty circular needles. See, they have just a tiny little cable. You have half on one and half on the other, kind of like with two circs, except you, just like with double points, you work with a third empty needle. What I like about these is I can position them so that my center point is in the middle of one needle. And then I can use a cute little marker. And so they pretty much will lay out just like double points, except you don't have the fourth needle. And these are really nice to have. There's all different options of the different needles. Um, if you're going to use double points, um, typically the shorter the better. Uh, I prefer like a five or a six inch. Likey makes a nice six. We have the Knitter's Pride and the five. Um, new uh, sock knitters often are so worried about them popping off the end. As long as you keep your stitches distributed to the middle, there's really no need to put you know stoppers on each end, although I've had lots of new sock knitters do that. They do make longer double point needles, but they usually don't make them in the sizes for the sock yarn. They usually start at a bigger one because they would, especially in the wood. Now, if you get to a metal needle, that's fine. Um, we prefer the wood needles for socks simply because your sock is less likely to slide off. You've got enough going on 
without having to grip the you know, needles and keep them from flying, especially if you knit loose at all. So you can see I can shake these. My stitches aren't going anywhere. With the metal needle, I may not be so lucky. The metal needles are more slippery. They're more likely to go just flying out on the floor. So I prefer a wood needle if I'm going to be knitting on my double points. Um, with the circulars, um, especially for Magic Loop, you want one with a nice pliable cord. I'm using the Chagu, and they're nice for that. You could also use a nice wood needle with a pliable cord. Same thing for the two circulars. You just don't want a real stiff cord, or you don't really want a catchy joint. But those are, to me, characteristics we never want with circular needles. Um, and with the Flexi Flips, they also come in different options. Um, the metal. With the metal, they have two different tips. One is the rocket tip, which is sharper, and the other tip is their regular turbo tip, with this, which is not as sharp. I don't quite get the logic behind that because personally, I like a sharp tip. I just always, with my finger, make sure I'm using the sharp tip when I start knitting. You can usually tell the difference. One is, you know, definitely more pokey. So you just want to make sure you use that. Uh, they recently also came out with wood ones as well. For those who like a wood needle, now, at least on the wood, the tips are the same on both ends. You don't have to worry about that. They're not going to quite have as sharp as a point as the rocket tip, but they still do have a nice point um, that's actually a nicer point than what they offer on the turbos. So if you have not tried these flexi flips, you really should. They're really, to me, take all the thought processes behind all these methods, combine them into one, and they work absolutely great. If you are interested in learning more about sock knitting, you really should check out our series of sock boxes. These are more than just a kit on making a sock. It is a complete uh, instructional program in a box. It in all of them include uh, specially curated yarn, great instructions. Our latest one, we have designed four new sock knitters. We had so many new sock knitters, people new to sock knitting, or that wanted to improve their techniques asking for this type of information we decided it was time to make it into a sock box so sock box number four just launched this last month and it features uh, two weights of yarn uh, we have it in a worsted weight which is nice for a new knitter because it goes quickly and shows you everything or if you want a regular sock we also have it in the sock weight so you can choose from either either one uh, this is just your basic sock with your rib cuff your French heel and your um, round toe. Um, our instructions are not just a pattern. Uh, so often with sock patterns, they tell you what to do if you don't understand necessarily how or how to make it look better. We're going to explain all of that to you. We have every little detail, um, how to avoid getting uh, holes and, and everything is just spelled out for you step by step. In addition, we although we have written this for one side, we have put a lot of information on custom fitting and then adapting uh, the size of this to uh, to fit whoever you know the recipient is going to be. Um, also included with the box, you get a nice hand painted project bag, a beaded stitch marker, the instructions, and the yarn. And what we do with the yarn is we go ahead and have it ready to go and divided into two balls. And the reason we do this is so that you can make two socks at a time. Um, there is a two sock at a time method, typically on magic loop, uh, where you knit them simultaneously. I'm not a big fan of that. I think that um, my preferred way to do it is two in tandem. And all that requires is an extra set of needles. Um, so that way you would knit your cuff, knit your cuff. Just go back and forth, do the heel, do the heel. Do the, you know, and that way you just repeat what you're doing and it really helps you learn. And even if you're an experienced sock knitter, it helps you remember what did I do? How, how did that work out? Um, how many rows did I have? And so that way you just go back and forth between the two. Um, we have other ones. If you enjoyed our beginner uh, sock box number four, go back to some of the original ones that we did. Uh, sock box number one has Pilsner pleating for the design. It has a, a Nyanic heel, an adapted Nyanic heel and toe, which is really cool. You might notice the heel and toe are the same. Uh, these are formed with German short rows. They're cool. Uh, sock box number two features helix striping. Helix striping is the coolest thing. It is a true, no jog, perfect little stripe. Uh, with that, we have the peasant heel and a wedged toe, which again, turn out to be identical. It's a lot of fun to do this sock. 
or we have softbox number three that has a beautiful Irish cable design, a ball brig and heel, which is really unusual. It goes down to next to nothing. It has a tiny little bit of Kitchener at the bottom, and then it's uh, finished off with a star toe. Uh, these are a great series. You will learn so much with these, um, so check them out. They're on our website at swatnick.com, and that's all I have for you today.